tired. After midnight and I fall asleep, but then when I wake up and I'm not in my bed, it's a giant room and the walls are wet. I'm not alone. I'm, I'm scared. There's creatures staring at me. It's like a bug a walking stick with a huge head. The eyes listen. It comes closer. It touches me. Was Kim abducted by mantis aliens? Nothing hidden from the mantis. Kim continues to recount the horror of what she went through. It, it puts tubes in me, hoping and then they flay me like, like a lab rat. It opens me, my skull, my chest, prods me open. Based on Kim's horrific description, is it possible she was abducted by an alien species known as the mantis? This one is a praying mantis type being, approximately seven foot tall, extremely smart, articulate, very manipulative. It's described as horrible, evil. The most curious of extraterrestrial races are mantis beings. They have been seen in many abduction scenarios. The mantis beings are bipedal. They stand upright. They have three pronged fingers and feet. And their language pretty much is a series of clicks. But they are also telepathic. They primarily come from Andromeda, Orion, and the Sombrero galaxy. But they actually far reach out into the universe to places that we don't even know uh, exist. I know that she just had this definite hatred and, and probably fear in regard to that praying mantis. Yvonne, when you were in a session with Kim, do you remember her ever saying that she was taken to a base? Yes, absolutely. And I know people have seen um, craft coming up from the water. I know from the work that I've done mm -hmm. that when you see a craft and there's a craft in the area, uh -huh. there usually are abductions. When you hear a story like Kim tells, I don't care who you are, when you're being taken against your will and being subjected to these examinations, it's a pretty frightening thing. You have no control over it. Now the question remains, was the Mantis piloting the USO? And if so, could they have an underwater base? The pressure is on to find answers. Ben and Melissa split up to meet with different experts who have been researching the USOs in this region for years. Preston Dennett will help Melissa dig deeper into the region's UFO encounters while Brittany Barbieri will work with Ben to locate an entrance to a potential underwater alien base. Brittany and I go way back researching UFO hotspots. She's done quite a lot of research about Catalina and these Channel Islands, so I want to see what new information she has. So you know, my partner Melissa and I have been hearing some pretty crazy stories about Catalina and the activity. Yes. So why don't we compare notes and see what's been going on? I'm all for it, because there seems to be a little bit of an uptick, too, recently. We're interviewing a lot of different people and trying to see what the patterns are. What can you tell me about all these cases that you have collected? I can tell you that mile for mile, the Santa Catalina Channel is probably one of the top producers in the world for USOs. I'd say there's a good handful of cases, 10, 20, where someone is out on their boat and an object comes from the distance underwater. They can see it glowing and it comes and it causes some electromagnetic disturbance with their you know, electrical system, the compass is spinning. Alien craft are often believed to use propulsion systems that produce strong electromagnetic fields 
A common sign of their presence is a compass gone haywire. We have cases stretching back, let's see, to the 1920s. Wow. Over half of these I would term USOs, unidentified submersible objects. We have one in particular that took place in 1966, and I have that footage. A Coast Guard photographer filming Catalina's topography caught this wingless disc speeding across the length of the island. Wow, are you serious? It went off the back of the mountain and disappeared. Off the back. Could this object have vanished into the water? Do you have any cases where they actually interact with people? Yeah, one case comes to mind. This is a gentleman I call Paul Nelson. That's not his real name. He wants to be anonymous. To this day, the man known as Paul lives in near constant dread of another abduction. But when he was a child in the late 1980s, he had an episode of missing time. One evening in 1987, Paul and his best friend snuck onto his parents' yacht, which was docked on Catalina. They had just bought some comic books and were super excited to look through them. The boys were just hoping for a little unsupervised fun. Instead, they got the shock of their lives. They had just gotten on the boat and boom. They were knocked unconscious. They're all alone. There's no parents or anything. Right. And then all of a sudden... Next thing they know, it's morning. So missing time. We're in a missing right. time situation. Years later, as an adult, he actually went under hypnosis. And under hypnosis, he was taken back to this incident on Catalina Island. Paul described being taken to what appears to be an underground area. He said it had rock walls. Like an undersea UFO base. Yes, it was quite large. He saw what he described as praying mantis type beings. Large, huge, bulbous eyes, triangular shaped head, you know, the claw like hands. These are deathly scary. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. In 2021, a previous investigation led Ben to an abductee who also suffered at the hands of the mantis, Rob Fullington. Is there anybody there with you? Yeah. I got a, a mantis. Mantis encounters are often horrifying and dangerous. Heaven's next. Um... I started getting sick. Constant vomiting, and every uh, blood sometimes. A really gnawing pain in my stomach. Many witnesses claim similar stories of experimentation and suffering at the hands of the mantis beings. At best, they describe their captors as emotionless insects, treating humans as guinea pigs. At worst, they describe an alien species intent on destroying humanity.